Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here and I appreciate each and every one of you. What we are doing tonight is we are going to create an IPsec VPN between a PFSense router, our PFSense router, and an Edge Router X. And we are going to let the PFSense box lead the dance and we're going to make the settings on the Edge Router match and then bring our VPN up. So I've got a little diagram here I'm going to show you and then we're going to hop right into it. So what, what I've got on one side is we've got a PFSense box. The WAN interface is statically set to 192.168.16.15 and the LAN is 192.168.1.1. This is the same mini PFSense box you've seen me set up. Then on the other side we have an edge router whose WAN is 192.168.16.16 .16, and whose LAN is 192.168.3.1. They are connected over the internet here in the lab. Now, just so you know, you could have static IPs, you could have dynamic IPs, and then you could also have dynamic DNS and be using host names for this. Just so happens that I'm the ISP in this situation and I have static addresses, but if you had dynamic DNS, it would work almost identically, except where we're gonna put the uh, WAN IPs, you would put your dynamic DNS host names. So, and something else we're going to configure here, since we're dealing with the PFSense, is where you're going to see us configure two phases. And so uh, we've not done that with any of the other routers. So phase one authenticates your peers and sets up the secure channel for negotiating IPsec uh, security associations in phase two. So anytime you see IPsec SAs, that's IPsec security associations. Then phase two deals with negotiating the IPsec uh, SA parameters and sets up mm -hmm. matching security associations in the peers, which allows everything to come up and be secure. So um, let's hop over. Let's hop over to our routers. So here's the PFSense box. We're like I said, we're gonna let this one lead the dance. So we're gonna come over here to IPsec. And it's going to come up, and we're going to add P1 or add phase 1. We're going to make this key exchange version 2. Internet protocol is IP version 4. The interface we're connecting on is the WAN. Remote gateway. Now, this is the IP address of the WAN interface on our edge router. So that is 16.6. .6. And we'll just call this uh, ER there. Mutual pre-shared key is what we're going to use for authentication. Uh, my identifier is going to be my IP. Peer identifier is the other side's IP address. We're going to put in let me in 2018. Now you could let this generate something that's super strong. So this is just for um, demonstration purposes and the lab purposes. So use something much stronger than let me in 2018. We're going to leave all of this, all of the phase one proposal, the encryption algorithm, all at default here. We're going to scroll down. We're going to leave dead peer uh, detection on. We'll go ahead and click save here. Now that is set up phase uh, one. We'll go ahead and apply our changes real quick. And then we're going to set up our phase two. So a lot of auto VPNs will take care of these. Uh, types of things for you, but you need to know when you're uh, connecting dissimilar devices, uh, you need to know how these things work, how the puzzle pieces work. So we're going to click show phase two. There is no phase two, so we're going to go ahead and add that. And it's going to be tunnel mode IP version four. The local no network will be our LAN subnet, so that 192.168. We're not going to do any natting. And the remote network is the 192.168.3.0. And they've already got the slash 24 on there. And we'll call this ER again. And our encryption algorithms, we're going to leave AES128 as what's turned on. We'll uncheck this other one, which is the AES128 GCM. We'll just have the one for now. This is the awesome thing about having a lab is you can play around with this, break it, and do whatever you want. Our hash, ag hash algorithm will stay at SHA-256 with a perfect forward secrecy uh, group of uh, diff that's a Diffie-Hellman group 14. We're going to go ahead and save this 
and hit apply changes. So now on the PFSense side, we have configured phase one and phase two of this. So I'm going to bring up a command prompt real quick, and I'm going to ping the uh, LAN interface of that edge router, and you can see that it's not pinging. It is now timing out as we speak. So I'm going to leave these settings up here so we can refer back to those. We're going to hop over to our edge router. Now I'm logging in as UBNT with a password of UBNT. Don't do that in production. And I've made a couple modifications to the default firewall. Now I did, I ran the wizard, the LAN, uh, the WAN plus two LAN two wizard and put a static IP address on the interface of the edge router, set the LAN. You can see we're on 3.1. Then I, I did a couple things so I don't have to keep switching my PC back and forth. Is I came into the firewall policies, WAN local, and I allowed remote administration. That's how I'm in this on the WAN IP. I do not recommend this for production unless you're going to nail it down to a source. So if you've got an office that has a static IP, you can nail it down there. Now, I am allowing ICMP. You can see that our ICMP is timing out here, uh, and I am allowing it from the 192.168.1. So once our VPN comes up successfully, I should be able to ping that interface. Other than these two things, this edge router is stock um, running that uh, WAN plus 2 LAN 2 um, wizard. So we're going to hop over here to start. We're going to go to VPN. We're going to go to site to site. We'll go to add peer. We don't need to show advanced options because we're going to go into config tree and we're going to make some changes. But we're going to put in the IP address of the WAN interface of our um, PFSense box. And we'll call this PFSense. By the way, I'm confused uh, about PFSense and what's supposed to be capitalized and what's not. So if somebody knows and can put it down in the description, that'd be awesome. Local IP, we could specify the WAN IP here. We can put any. Uh, we're going to put in our pre-shared key, let me in 2018. Local subnet, of course, on this side is going to be the 3.0 and the remote subnet is going to be the 1.0 network. We're going to go ahead and apply this. And you're going to see that it is still timing out. Uh, we'll get the green confirmation down here in just a second. And we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to add phase two and make some changes. So you can see we've got the VPN, but nothing, nothing's happening yet. So we're going to go over here to config tree. And on the left-hand side, we're going to expand VPN. We're going to expand IPsec. And the two groups we're going to be dealing with are our ESP group and our IKE group. So we're going to expand this. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, drill down into our proposal. We've got one proposal so far. We'll create a second one in a minute. But what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that our encryption and our hash uh, match. So our encryption is AES128 and our hash is SHA256. So this will need to be changed to 256. And we'll go ahead and preview that and apply it. And in our, our Diffie-Hellman groups, uh, 14 on both, both of those. So uh, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we will add that. We'll update the list. So this is uh, phase two. We'll come down here to IKE group. Now we're going to change the key exchange since we made it uh, IKEV2 or IKEV2 on the PFSense box. We're going to update it there. And uh, let's make sure. Okay, so that these red things are things that are changing, just so you know. And we'll come in here, Diffie Hellman Group 14, encryption AES128. We need to change this to SHA256. And then we need to come in here and we'll add our second proposal. And then we'll come into our second proposal. Diffie Hellman Group is going to be 14. Our AES128 and SHA-256. Now we're going to hit preview and it's going to set all of these things. Now I could have accidentally skipped anything. Um, I will double check here in a minute. We're going to go ahead and apply it. Now if we get a red 
message here, that means there was a problem with the configuration. If we get a green message, we are going to check our, our VPN here. We'll go ahead and bring the VPN up. It says the configuration has been applied successfully. I'm still getting timeouts, but it could take a minute for the VPN to, uh, to come up. We'll just double check all the settings. AES 128, SHA 256. Okay, so missed one here, SHA 256. We'll apply that. And it looks like our VPN is coming up. So that's good. And everything else should be good. So we just had that one little. Uh, incident where it said SHA-1 still instead of SHA-256. And uh, look at this, we are now able to ping the uh, WAN or yeah, the uh, LAN interface of the edge router through the tunnel. And if we come over here to wizards and we go to VPN status, we are going to see that everything is up and up. So uh, it, it really is, as long as you understand the phases and you could, we could add um, we could add, we could just make this thing just complicated. Um, but as long as you're using strong encryption, strong hash, you should be okay. Make sure you're using strong passwords. Everything here was for demonstration purposes only to show you how to do this so you can get, you know, get through it. Um, you know, that's the little NetGate box here and the edge router X. That's what this is. Everything's up and going. So um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, we do provide best practice consulting in voice over IP, wired and wireless networking and information security and assurance. You can go to willyhow.com below, fill out that contact form and somebody will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we will get you to someone who can. That is our pledge to you. If you want to chat with us on Discord, the uh, Discord server link is down below. Charlie is our admin. Tim also does some admin over there, and they're, they're doing a great job. If you want to become a patron on our Patreon channel, uh, I appreciate everybody who does that. It's fantastic. Uh, the link to that is down below. The links to these products, uh, Amazon links, are also down below and a link to our Amazon shop. And one more quick thing. Uh, I did get a new Fitbit, so I'll flash my email address up here. If you want to become an account an accountability buddy with me in the Fitbit software, we've had a few people join already. Like I said, I will put my email address, send me a friend request on uh, Fitbit, and we will all you know we'll do some challenges and stuff like that, and um, looking to get back in shape. So. Um, We'll be coming at you again this week with another video, but that's it for now. Once again, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.